Morning. Um, today we're going to evaluate a limit. It's the, the limit as x approaches 1 of the arc cosine or the inverse cosine of the ln of the square root of x. Um, so really, uh, the best way I know to look at this is just in little pieces and probably in the forms of little graphs is the way that I would like to do it. So as uh, go in the variance side to the square root of x, I could bring one half out in front of the uh, uh, ln. It, it's not really going to make any difference in this case. So I'm just going to look at the square root function this little uh, sketch there. As we come into positive 1 from the left and the right, we have a double-sided limit on the square root of x, and it's 1. So now I'm going to look at the ln function and at 1, x value of 1 coming in from both sides uh, the y value is 0. So this in here, this is, let me use some little color. Uh, this square root of x is going to 1 as x approaches 1. Um, the ln of the square root of x as x approaches 1 is going to zero. So now we look at what the arc cosine graph is doing as we approach uh, zero, as x approaches zero from both sides. So the arc function graph, arc cosine function graph, looks something like that. the restricted domain of negative 1 to 1 and a range from 0 it's not the greatest picture to pi with a y-intercept of pi over 2 so as uh, the arc cosine approaches 0 from both sides the limit equals uh, pi over 2 and that's just the uh, reasoning process that I use. It's, it's based on the fact that the uh, uh, square root function is continuous on its domain, the ln function is continuous on its domain, and the arc cosine is continuous on its domain. So therefore, we can say the limit as x approaches 1 from both sides of the arc cosine of the ln of the square root of x is pi over 2.